welcome to First Lutheran Church here in Beaver Dam. Greeting to all of you who are uh, watching uh, live stream or will be watching later on today, tomorrow, next week. And greetings to all of you who are sitting here today. Today is uh, June 13th, second Sunday of the month. We had drive-up communion, so that won't happen again in, for a couple weeks. Uh, but we do have a picnic and uh, a volunteer thank you. Uh, uh, way uh, we've been longing to get together, right? We've been longing and waiting to s- bless you and uh, get together and have a meal and see how you're doing and all those things. So we're going to do that outside. Uh, at 11:15, we'll we'll uh, we'll begin with that opening prayer, thanking God for the day and life and food and and. Um, and we'll begin to eat, and we'll recognize some various groups. Uh, thank you, and the music, and if you need to go somewhere, graduation, uh, say goodbye and be on your way. But it's really meant for us to spend some time together and to thank you. So that's going to happen at 11.15 after this service. And uh, so if you didn't sign up, yeah, you just thought, gee, what am I going to do? I didn't want to commit. You're here to stay. We have extra food. It's just like Grandma, right? She always made extra. Um, other thing, we no longer require for you to sign up. You don't have to go online. If you're going to attend church, just show up. No more sign up. But we ask that you just fill out this purple card, just like in the old days. You know, when we say we want to we wanna go back to what was normal, that's what we did. Communion card, uh, attendance. Uh, we use that for church records. The Synod uses that. How many Lutherans are worshiping? And that's how they know. And also, if there was a reason to know who's here today, we can always go back and look. That's our tracing, if there was ever a need for that. But I would just say, let's do what we did. Fill out your communion card. Put it in the basket in the back. Communion. um, Today, you'll come up these side aisles. You'll go down the center. There'll be, I need a couple assistants. Uh, Judy and I will serve the bread, and then we need a couple people on each side to serve the wine and grape juice, and the empties go in these empty trays. Uh, what else is coming up? Father's Day. Get those pictures of Grandpa up on the screen. Send them in to April. Uh, if you sent in one like 20 years ago, it may not be there because they're kind of always updating it this year. Like, let's freshen it up. Let's say you like dad's picture that you submitted two years ago. Tell April, say, my dad, my husband, his picture, or my kid's father, we submitted it two years ago. We want to keep it. Let her know. So, you know, it's a precious slideshow we're going to see next week. And uh, what else can I tell you? I think that's enough for today. Let us, let us just direct our hearts and minds and worship the Lord. Stand only as you're able. Welcome. Join the journey of Jesus today. Here's what we do together. We come in our different ways, walking in our own styles and at our own speeds, but we come to join the journey. Come walk with a God who not only announces the good news, but brings it to life. A God who walks and gives the spirit and power and energy and newness and change, and to give it to you. Walk with a God who sees all that you can and and can be and the opportunity to love and be renewed. We come and join the journey of Jesus Jesus today. today. Welcome to worship. We invite you to join in singing with us as you feel comfortable. We start with Open the Eyes of My Heart. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord.
together in love as we sing holy, holy, holy. Sing that again. To see you high and lifted up, shining in the light of your glory. Pour out your power in love as we sing holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy. Holy, holy. the good news. God's Spirit has come with power and enthusiasm to show us that Jesus is the way, the way for every day. God does not come with easy answers nor with directions. God calls us to join the journey and follow your Spirit guide. sing our song of mercy. Holy Spirit, you are the breath that inspires and the fire that enlightens each word God speaks. As we walk into our ordinary days with our ordinary ways, send us out 
enlivened and enriched by God's word to be messengers of hope to the world. Amen. Please be seated. Our first reading is from 2 Corinthians chapter 5. So we are always confident, even though we know that while we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. Yes, we do have confidence, and we would rather be away from the body and at home with the Lord. So whether we are at home or away, we make it our aim to please him. For all of us must appear before the judgment seat of Christ so that each may receive recompense for what has been done in the body, whether good or evil. For the love of Christ urges us on because we are convinced that one has died for all. Therefore, all have died, and he died for all, so that those who live might live no longer for themselves, but for him who died and was raised for them. From now on, therefore, we regard no one from a human point of view, even though we once knew Christ from a human point of view, we know him no longer in that way. So if anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. See, everything has become new. Thanks be to God. Jesus frequently used parables to teach ordinary people as they were able to hear and understand. Images of sowing and growing shows the vitality of God's kingdom. Our gospel lesson for this day comes from the gospel of Mark, the fourth chapter. Jesus said, The kingdom of God is as if someone would scatter seeds on the ground and would sleep and rise night and day, and the seeds would sprout and grow. He did not know how the earth produces of itself, first the stalk, then the head, then, the, then full grain in the head. But when the grain is ripe, at once he comes out with his sickle, because the harvest has come. He also said, Jesus also said, with what can I compare the kingdom of God? Or what parable will we use for it? It is like a mustard seed, which, when sown upon the ground, is the smallest of all seeds on earth. Yet, when it is sown, it grows up to become the largest of all shrubs and puts forth large branches so that the birds of the air can make their nest in, in the shade, in its shade. With many of the parables, he spoke the word to them as they were able to hear it. He did not speak to them except in parables, but he explained everything in private to his disciples. The Gospel of the Lord. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and from the coming and living Jesus Christ our Savior and Lord. Amen. The kingdom of God. Hmm. What can Jesus compare the kingdom of God to? We find this in a parable. This first parable, Jesus tells a story of a man who was to sow seeds in a field. And then there would be a bountiful harvest. Come harvest season, what a great crop, right? But curiously, this story kind of 
depicts a sower that could be like incompetent. Describes, Jesus describes him as a man who just simply scatters, throws seeds on the ground and doesn't even know how they will grow. He goes to bed, he wakes up day and night, and they grow. He doesn't, it doesn't say that he has any weeding or any cultivating that even waters these seeds, but they grow. Jesus says the earth produces of itself. When we think about the word throw in the Greek form, balo, it means to toss. Now, my father was a farmer. He never tossed his seeds. He put them neatly in rows, even the wheat, the oats, the corn. No tossing on our farm. But this man goes out and tosses those seeds and has no idea how they're going to grow. Why would Jesus tell a parable about this incompetent person who's out there sowing seeds? And it's like the kingdom of God, he says. Hmm, what's the kingdom of God like? Well, what are the seeds? Well, in Scripture and song, we think of the seeds as faith, right? Faith. But later on, in other places, we read that the, word, the seeds are the Word of God. Now, in my previous church, uh, always took the kids on a youth trip, right? Mission trip. We'd always look for, oh, where was there a uh, tornado that we could go and help clean up um, the community or rebuild? Where was there a flood? Where are there people in need? And that's where we would go. So we had many ages of people, even my own kids, and we were in Moore, Oklahoma. And um, some of the older kids and dads were out running power tools and building sheds and taking down garages and things. But we were too young for that, or at least the kids were. I was supervising the kids. But our job was what? To sow seeds. Somebody had given this church bags and bags of seeds to go out and spread them on the, along the road that was like ripped out and washed out because of the tornado. And they wanted to start to beautify the countryside, but also keep it from erosion or wind erosion, right? Not just necessarily the rain, but the wind can blow across the plains. And uh, so we were out there, much like the day, I mean, think about, this is July, so what's the temperature like in Oklahoma in July? Kind of like the last few days. We're out there with bags of seeds, just throwing them. I mean, some of them are really being tossed, right? I mean, these kids are like, oh, why are we out here? What kind of a, what are we doing? It's like, and I said, we're, we're planting the word of God. Uh, we were only told our job in here in Oklahoma is just spread the word of God. That's what we're doing. We're spreading the word of God. Some of them fall on rocky soil, rocky ground. Some tossed in amongst weeds. And some in good soil. Kind of like the, the other parable says. And, and, I, and I would just tell the kids, we're spreading the word of God. It's not for us to know what the word is, really, or what the message is, or where they fall. And if they grow, our job is that we sow. So we toss and toss. This parable is much like that. We went there only to seed, sow seeds, spread the word of God. What's the word of God? What were we sowing that day? What is the word of God? What's the word? What's the gospel, right? People say, Pastor, I want to hear the gospel, the good news, right? What's the good news? I want you to think about that. If somebody was to walk up to you today, you're at the picnic, right? And they, somebody sits down and they say, tell me what the gospel is. What's the good news? And you're going to look at them and you're going to like, good question. So first of all, think about what was the good news when Jesus resurrected? What did he tell Mary and those other disciples, Peter and John, to do? Go ahead and tell people that he is risen. So instantly I think of from Easter, 
Our message is that He has risen. He's alive. Jesus lives. Jesus saves. God can bring the dead back to life again. God cares. God loves you. That's gospel. We think about Jesus saves. I see it on billboards. Gospel. Jesus loves gospel. What a friend you have in Jesus. Gospel. You are saved by grace through faith. Gospel. In my Father's house as many dwelling places, I will come back and take you to myself. Gospel. You're part of my plan. I love you. That's the news that we ought to be telling people as we spread the word. Now, going back to the parable, we don't need to know how the word or the seeds are going to grow, right? According to the parable, all we need to do is spread the word, throw those seeds around. God will do the rest. God will produce of himself. It's not our doing. This lesson brings good news, but also, I believe, acts as a warning to us in the church today. How many of us get so fixed on, oh, the right paint, the right color, the right chair arrangement, all of that, and we fail to throw the seeds of the gospel around. We fail. Did you hear about the church that, that was moved from in town to the suburbs? Because they, their community was so needy. It became more poverished and more run down. And that church was just exhausted from the need of the people. So they moved out into the suburbs. And they're thriving and growing. Sometimes we do that. God has us right where we need to be. And we don't want to be there. Kind of takes us to the next parable. When he says the kingdom of God is like a mustard seed, something small, right? And the older we get, the heart, the smaller it is. And when you drop it, you'll probably never find it. That's how small it is. I mean, I used to think it was the smallest seed, but I think poppy seeds are smaller. But that's not the point. It's small. And it can grow into something very large. Palestinian times, I, I read that they can be six, seven, eight feet tall, that mustard seed plant, that shrub. And the birds of the air make their nest in its shade. Well, if you're trying to have... If you're trying to grow like a spice garden and have mustard seeds and mustard plants and then it turns into a bird sanctuary, aren't you going to be upset? So you cut it down. Did you hear about the person who cut down their tree in their backyard because the birds were just nesting and there was so much bird dropping on their patio, they couldn't stand it. Cut down the tree. Like the church, they couldn't stand the people in their neighborhoods, so they moved. But what if what if the mustard seed, God's kingdom, was simply to house the birds or the people? To create shade and, and a place for them to go? What if that was God's plan? And we thought we knew better. So the parable, the kingdom of God, is, may seem unpredictable and may very well not be our plan, but that's... that's planting the seeds of God's word, but also the faith. Do we trust God? Okay, we don't see God. We, this first gardener that planted those seeds, he may think, gee, like the kids, throwing seeds around. They're going like, these are never going to grow. These little dried out, prune type looking things that they're tossing out in the ditch. Like, I'm sure some of the kids were just tossing a lot to hurry up and get it done, right? So they could go home, right? So we're just tossing those seeds. We're thinking, are they ever going to grow? We probably look at each other and think, are we ever going to mount anything? 
And just because we can't see the possibilities in those seeds and in you and I and in our neighbors and our community that God doesn't have a plan, that God isn't going to make us grow because that's God's will. So that's the danger, is we need to trust and leave it up to the Lord. And, And just because we can't see God and see God at work doesn't mean that God's not there. I like the song that Bryce chose, Open the heart of my, open the eyes of my heart, Lord. These parables parables are all about that. Being able to see. What we see with our eyes today is not real. What we, what God sees is real. So we want to see with our heart. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord, because I want to see you. The kingdom of God is, is being able to see with the eyes of God. The kingdom of God is spreading the good news. Jesus lives. God is in control. God loves you. It's going to be okay. I said the first service, I was at a family get-together. It was kind of like a family reunion. It was like 25 people, um, birthday, and uh, a lot of those family members of the Wentz, right? So, and the Wentz are not known like, traditionally they're getting along well jealousy well, basically jealousy so about 30 years they decided they weren't going to speak to each other 35 and we were told never to talk to our cousins so we didn't and we got together hearing the stories there was a lot of death death suicide a lot of tragedy in one family it just makes you hurt it makes you hurt right overwhelming, reconnecting stories. My, it was my dad's brothers. And, and then, then I get home and checking up my wife. She's not here because she's taking care of her father as he's dying. And my siblings, my, 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 not my siblings, my children are helping and rotating through. And so I found myself kind of being consumed last night with pressing in. And I got very tearful and I'm sitting on the patio and, and I just felt this hand on my shoulder. Thought was maybe one of the daughters. They were the only ones home. Nobody there. Felt this hand on my shoulder. And I instantly felt that it's going to be okay. I'm here. Trust. The kingdom of God is about trusting and having faith in God. And we need to tell each other that. Trust. He is risen. He is alive. He loves you. He's in charge. It's going to be okay. Let us pray. Most most goodness and gracious God, help us to continue to spread your word. Help us to not take upon ourselves your will, but listen to, to your will. Not our will, but your will. Help us to do your work by spreading the good news. Spreading seeds. Let, you're the planter. You're the true gardener. We're not. Help us to just simply continue to spread through our words, through our actions, through our smiles, through our hugs. And all of these are signs of your love for your people. In your name we pray. Amen. I invite you to stand if you are willing and able. Join us in our song of the day, How Great Is Our God. The splendor of the King, golden majesty, let all the earth rejoice, all the earth rejoice. Himself in light, darkness tries to hide and trembles at his voice, trembles at his voice. How great is our God! Sing with me, how great is our God, and all will see how great, how great.
Together, let's affirm our faith. <clears throat> we believe in God, the one who comes before us and goes behind us, creating life and opportunities to love and care for the world. We believe in Jesus Christ, who walks with us into real life each day. He is God, yet human like us, and experience all life's joys and pains and challenges like we do. But his love is so great that not sin nor suffering nor even death could stop it. Today, the love of Jesus lives and continues to bring new life to the world. We believe in the Holy Spirit who comes like the wind and blows in and through us to bring God's power and light to all the world. The Spirit breathes life into us, the body of Christ we call the church, and enables us to follow the way of Christ. We believe in God who goes before and behind us, with, in, and through us, bringing hope and life and newness to the world. Please be seated, and we'll have our offering. In response to your promise of life, in response to your promise of love, in response to all of your promises, Amen. Amen. and the prayers of the church. Um. On this third Sunday after Pentecost, let us unite before God in prayer, responding to each petition with the words, 
hear our prayer. Holy God, fount of blessings, we pray for the church that the seeds of faith which you plant take root and grow throughout the world. Lord, in your mercy, creator, even the animals, trees, and flowers delight in your goodness. From the depths of the soil to the highest mountain, bring forth new plants. Restore growth to places suffering drought, flooding, and pestilence, and that wild animals thrive in the habitat they require. Lord, in your mercy, judge of nations, we pray for our leaders and those in power. Grant them the ability to regard those under their charge with humility, dedicating their lives in service to others. Lord, in your mercy, divine comforter, you show compassion to those in need and provide relief to those who call on you. Bless all who suffer, especially Luna, Kayla, Ron, Brenda, John, Tom, Mary, Alan, Jean, Barb, Richard, Ben, Tina, Justin, Eileen, Andy, Wendy, Jim, Amy, <coughs> Joyce, Landon, Davy, Dale, Tim, Ellen, Bill, Judy, Charles, Betty, Jackie, Ross, Ethan, Paul, Sam, Lisa, Jason, Sue, Oliver, <coughs> Karen, Dolores, Jensen, and Diane. Lord, in your mercy, <coughs> eternal God, we give thanks for all who have died in the faith and for those whom we remember before you. We offer our thanks for all who will die today <coughs> we ask your mercy and at the end that we join with all of your people in the perfection of your presence. Lord, in your mercy, we lift our prayers to you, O oh God, trusting in your abiding grace through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. In the night in which our Lord Jesus was betrayed, he took bread. He gave thanks, giving it to his disciples to eat, saying, Take and eat, this is my body, broken and given for you. Eat and do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks, giving it to all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Drink and do this for the remembrance of of me. Lord, remember us in our kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Receive an invitation. Here at First Lutheran, we practice open communion, which means simply that if you are hungry and thirsty for our Lord and Savior, want to receive His grace, His salvation, His love, His body, His blood, come to the table. You'll come again down these outer aisles and You'll receive a tray of got uh, wine, which is the red colored, uh, and then some light colored substance in the center is grape juice. 
And if you are of the gluten-free variety, uh, there is that as well. Um, we keep it covered. The table is set. The gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. All of you 
is more than enough for all of me for every thirst and every need you satisfy me with your love and all i have in you is more than Gracious God, you give your people your spirit and call us into fellowship with you and one another. Thank you for the gift of our church. Bless us as we gather for fellowship and food, celebrating the future you inspire. In Jesus' name. May the Spirit of God empower you as you journey with Jesus into ordinary and extraordinary places of life. May you be blessed with the energy of God to run and not be weary, but to walk and not falter or faint, even when the world seems overwhelming. The Spirit goes with us and gives us life and breath and passion and fire of God in all that we do. In my wrestling and in my doubts, in my failures, we won't walk out. Your great love will lead me through. You are the peace in my troubled sea. Oh, you are the peace in my troubled sea. In the silence you won't let go. In the questions your truth will hold. Your great love will lead me through. You are the peace. My lighthouse, my lighthouse, shining in the darkness, I will follow you, oh, my lighthouse, my lighthouse, I will trust the promise, you will carry me safe to shore, safe to shore. Trust the promise, you will carry me safe to shore, safe to shore, safe to shore, safe to shore. Fire before us, you're the brightest, you will lead us through the storms. Fire before us. My lighthouse, shining in the darkness, I will follow you, oh, my lighthouse, my lighthouse, 
I will trust the promise. You will carry me safe to shore. Safe to shore. Safe to shore. Safe to shore. shore. Journey continues. Oh. 